Hey and welcome to another episode of the Unspoken Truth of Le Digital Leadership, Living the Leadership Values. Today I have the pleasure to have Jennifer Garman from Gratitude Mission join us. Thank you. Hi, thank here. you so much for having me. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> it's a pleasure. So, for those that don't know what you do, which is Gratitude Mission, I mean, the word speaks for itself, but let's go a bit deeper in how you came into the gratitude mission because it's such a unspoken thing. You know, it's, people are still getting used to talking about you know, being gratitude and being grateful, but where did it stem up for you and why did you start this? Uh, yeah, well, actually it, it saved my life, so to speak. And I'll take you back about um, 15 years ago. Uh, I was just suffering from a mystery illness. Um, overnight, it just hit me and I was chugging along what I thought I was doing pretty well. I was juggling a bunch of balls in the air, keeping a lot of things afloat and getting a lot done. And I felt pretty accomplished. I felt like I was doing a pretty good job. And then one night, just out of the blue, I had complete and absolute insomnia. And I just kind of laughed it off going, wow, that's never happened before. That was a fluke until it happened the next night again and the next night again. And for absolutely no reason, there was no stressful thing, no traumatic event, nothing came on that caused that. Um, it was just, I was just going along like I, you know, had done for the last several years, just, you know, adding more and more to my plate and juggling more and more balls at once. And it, it I think it was just the straw that hit the camel's back and I just collapsed. Um, and from the insomnia, it spiraled into um, food sensitivities and allergies and autoimmune um, issues and I was just a mess. I was really, really sick and it was I was getting worse. And I was going from doctor to doctor to specialists to you name it. I saw alternative medicine, I saw chiropractors, I saw um, acupuncturists, I saw everybody. And I was not getting any better. Um, I wasn't, at, at some point I, I kind of halted the train and wasn't getting worse. Um, and it, I had gradual increases here and there in my health, but I was not, I knew what it felt to be well and I was not well. And I knew I wanted to get back to that point, but it was just not happening. And after about seven years, seven and a half years of, you know, struggling and going down rabbit hole after rabbit hole diagnoses that didn't work and protocols that failed, I just decided that, you know what, I'm just gonna move on with my life and I'm gonna stop chasing this, you know, potential holy grail that may or may not exist back to my health. And I decided at that point to get my life coaching certification. And it was during that time where the notion of gratitude kept coming up over and over again. And the, the premise that the happiest people are those who practice gratitude. So I decided what do I have to lose? I could definitely be happier in my life. So I started to incorporate that in. Um, I had also been studying neuroplasticity as well in my, my studies. And I was fascinated by that. So I incorporated more of that in. And lo and behold, my, my health started to transform. And I thought at first it was a fluke. I'm like, there's no correlation to me practicing gratitude and my health changing. But the more I did it, the more improvement I saw in my health. And I started doing more research because I was very skeptical. But all the research pointed to the fact that, you know, this, this, these strong emotions, gratitude being one of them, joy and love being two other very strong pillar emotions, um, can have transformative effects on your health when um, fully embraced and, you know, lived throughout the day. And that's what I was doing. And I was focusing on the future of what it felt like to be healthy, remembering back in the day, a really happy time when I was healthy, I was happy, and I was projecting that into the future and being grateful for that future. Um, and I was, it was basically happening. I was evolving back into that healthy, happy person. And I was just, I was floored. And the more I studied, the more I realized that this wasn't just a fluke. This wasn't just something that happened to me. There were a lot of people that this had happened to. And I decided that I need to share gratitude with the world. And I formed gratitudemission.org at the time. And I took my first product, the Growing Gratitude Tree to Market that teaches gratitude to kids. It bonds families together and it's gratitude is best when it's shared. So it's um, something that's near and dear to my heart. And then in the last year, I got the opportunity to write a book about my story and about other people I've interviewed who have very similar stories. And that um, my book Flourish just came out in April. So that's my story in a nutshell. <laughs> wow, that is, um, that really resonates with one of my um, 
my mentors who had similar issue when he said he um, he had this mysterious illness as well that came through and they keep diagnosing and treating and treating tried everything as well but he could not shake it until he just got to the point where he I think he said he went for a walk or went to a park where he met some guy who who says oh yeah I, I can I can treat your problem and then he was like what do you mean you can treat my problem like you know he's just a random guy on the bench you know park bench and stuff he goes what you need is a nice juicy steak and a cigar and some <laughs> wine and some wine and and you'll be fine and yeah and then there's more story to this but he just he went and did it my mentor was like what have i got to lose right so then he went you know had steak had wine cigar and he was just like and then he was fine like the, the, the apparently the illness just kind of went like he changed the focus and and, and things like that and then he stopped focusing on the health side but more yes. about what he was creating at the time he was writing a book as well and that was when it came out and it was like it was changing in focus i don't know what came with it but i'm sure there's um, like he said there's some scientific reasoning for behind it behind it all and it's yeah it's, of that story it's fascinating when we change our thought and focus and shift the focus of our lens and believe really what is possible that we can get back to the point or we we can't have what we want it's it's amazing what happens when we have that positive thoughts and we truly believe that it can be and let's talk about your gratitude tree because that was, that was interesting what, what is the gratitude tree so the gratitude tree it's a vinyl decal um, i'm sure a lot of people are familiar with you know words they put up on their wall the little stickers um it's a, it's a, made of the same material and the branches stick to the wall like a tree branches of a tree and the leaves are each things um, that you write you write little phrases words that you're grateful for in your life each day and you add them to the tree so over the course of a week, a month, it becomes a visual reminder of all the things that you do have in your life. Whereas we tend to focus on what we don't have. And we get very caught up in, you know, so-and-so has this, but I don't have this. And we get wrapped up in the negative that way. And if we shift that lens, like you mentioned, shift that perspective to the focus of, wait a minute, I have all this. It's truly miraculous what changes in our life because um, I truly believe what we focus on expands. Um, and I'm not the first to say that. A lot of people before me have said that. And I'm a true believer on that. If we focus on positive, if we focus on, you know, hope and things that are keep things positive in every aspect, all we have, everything that we do have, um, we, we get more. We, um, we kind of, we expand the positive. Um, we have more to be grateful for. So that's truly what it is. It's, it's a tool to um, teach people to shift that focus um, and have that reminder, that visual in a place that's prominent where you're gonna pass it several times a day, just to shift that focus back more easily to wait a minute, I've got all this, I need to stop focusing on what, those few things that I don't have that I'm letting take up all my thoughts. Especially with the technology and access of information we have now, right? It's just instant gratification. It, it's, it now. yeah, it's going against us to be honest. <laughs> Uh, I love that. When it comes to your journey in terms of uh, leadership, where there's, what has there been uh, times where you stepped up or chose to to lead? Because oh, obviously you started the um, gratitude mission. Which, what, what was the decision you made to to start that kind of project? Like you was gonna change something for other people, because this is more now bigger than yourself, right? Yes. Well, it was it was a little hard at first because I had to shift from like, OK, I'm not going to have the, the straightforward career. Um, I'm not going to work for an employer anymore. I'm going to go do this on my own. And there's a very good chance it may not work. I might fail. And um, that was very looming. And I had to just push past that fear and that uncertainty and say, you know what? I may. It may not work. I may fail. But I don't want to not try because I would have a, a massive regret, a big hope in my life if I didn't say, take this opportunity and go and try. And I'm so glad I did because just the doors that opened up from the minute I decided that I'm going to start this company were, it was unbelievable. I went from a conceptual idea to in talks with um, the home shopping network, HSN, to the point where they said that, you know, we're going to put a purchase order in for something that I didn't even have in hand yet. 
So they were going to give me a purchase order for something that I had to go and source and manufacture and get here, get through customs, all that stuff. And it just became this, um, this massive thing that was bigger than me. And then I had to take a step back and going, yeah, this is bigger than me. It's going to be helping people and it's going to be get, giving people hope and a perspective shift that really need it. And that's what I had to focus on and keep my energy focused on was that this was beyond me. This was going to be for other people. And when I, when I kept that focus, it was, ama it was amazing how many obstacles just dissipated that had been there the day before. And I'm like, I shift that perspective. I shift that focus. I stay thankful. And those obstacles just miraculously find their way to, you know, become nothing. <laughs> was the obstacles become nothing because you enjoyed and loved the process so much that they didn't feel like obstacles? Well, I don't know that that's the case because all my product <laughs> got on the ship <laughs> in Hong Kong and then a tsunami came through and it got delayed for, I think, 10 days. And that just upended everything because I had deadlines that I had agreed to and that all of a sudden were pushed. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen? And luckily, I mean, you know, I kept getting told, like, well, this doesn't happen. We don't shift these, you know, the air date and stuff like that for products. And but it was just so miraculous that everything just fell into place. And the flights that I had booked for the air date that I originally had easily got moved. I mean, it was literally when I shift and I kept my pers um, perspective positive and I shifted back into that state of gratitude that I just saw the way, the path without obstacles and it, it, it's what happened. Um, yes, things still didn't go right. Things still happened. My, my product actually got caught up in customs um, for the customs check, <laughs> which um, I had no idea that that took place. But apparently certain things get flagged and it's a random thing and they get held up. And luckily, um, the date shift had happened where they're like, let's just not give it 10 days. Let's just give it, you know, 17 days just to be safe. And it just so happened we needed exactly those 17 days because the customs decided to hold up and do an additional inspection on my product before they released it to me. So it was just one, you know, I, I can't describe it other than things happen for a reason. And when you keep the perspective of positive and grateful at your core, it, it really it doesn't seem like that big of a deal and the obstacles aren't as um, monumental as they once were when you have that negative, like, oh, everything's going to go wrong perspective and, you know, nothing's working out. How did you deal with that challenge when it came with them? You know, when it came through the delays <laughs> and stuff and you did, you know, the thoughts would be like, oh, what's going to go wrong next? And the negative you know, voices start coming into your head where I'd be like, that's not going to happen. This isn't going to work everything's been delayed what was going through what was your well initially <laughs> yeah that's true I, initially that shift did happen and it took me right back to the negative this is when the tsunami was coming in the ship was going to be delayed going out and i was like oh no this is all going to fall apart this house of cards is just going to crumble and i'm going to be held you know holding the bag for everything and i'm going to be out like thousands and thousands of dollars that i didn't anticipate and I did let myself fall back into that negative, but I was quickly reminded that, wait a minute, this is all for other people. This isn't for me. I'm helping people by doing this. And when I kept, when I pulled back into that positive perspective, that positive mindset that, you know what, this is going to work out because this is not for my benefit. This is to benefit as many people as I can reach. And I kept that and I held that. And then when the next obstacle came up where the customs decided to hold it, I'm like, you know what, it's going to work out because it worked out the, the first time. It's going to work out. They gave me the additional dates for a reason, and it did. It worked out, and the stress was not nearly to the point for the customs hold that it was for the tsunami. So luckily, <laughs> I had learned from my, my past mistake of letting myself shift back to the negative that, no, that doesn't serve me any good. I need to stay positive. I need to stay in the right mindset and the right frame, uh, the lens. And sure enough, um, yeah, when you build that muscle um, to work against adversity and you build up the gratitude and you build up staying positive, it's quick how you can shift back into it. And I can be, I can attest to the fact that I used to be a person that would easily get sucked into the negative and sucked down into the, woe is me, this isn't going to work out, everything's falling apart. And now I look for those little glimmers of hope, like, wait a minute, this is a good thing. This went right. When everything else could be falling apart, I search for those little negative pieces and those little positives. And that gets me through and it makes it not such a big deal. 
And when it comes to your learning with shifting the focus, because I, I know this is something that's not meant, what's well, something that many people still well know how to do because you study you studied <laughs> you studied and you and you you're mastering your craft in that area for those that start out not studying that you know those area of subject what kind of um, advice can they get started on with, with slowly getting into it <laughs> <laughs> That's basics. a great question. <laughs> and what I suggest is um, just a slowly practicing gratitude each day. The, um, when you first wake in the morning and right when you go to bed at night, those are the two times where your consciousness is right in between. Um, it's a state of consciousness and a state of unconsciousness. You're kind of in between those two states. And that's a great time to learn anything new. It's a great time to change and make positive changes in your life. And it's a wonderful time to just remember a few things that you're grateful for. And if it's at the beginning of the day, just focus on those feelings of, you know, why you feel so grateful for it. Um, just embrace that feeling of, you know, I have this in my life. I'm so thankful for this. And it's amazing how much that carries you through the day. And again, ending the day on that note, too, of just reminding yourself what has gone right that day, what you have benefited from, what you can be grateful for. Um, it's a great way to drift off to sleep, um, again, with that same mindset. Um, so that's just a really easy way to practice. It takes just a couple of minutes. Um, if you can do it both morning and night, you'll see results much, much quicker. Um, I attest it to literally a muscle going to the gym. You're going to start going to the gym. You're going to start working out. You're not going to see anything for a couple of weeks. It takes a little while. But when you build that up and when you focus on that and you really embrace that um, practice, it's so quick to um, you're so quick to be able to jump back into it when things start to derail and they do go wrong because they will. Adversity is going to come. It's just a matter of when. Um, once you've built that muscle up, you're able to shift back into that positive focus and that mindset of gratitude. And that's what easily gets you through adversity. And there's some just really bad things that happen to people. And you look at them and you're like, how are they able to get through that and, you know, maintain this um, demeanor of, you know, positivity and um, composure? And I truly believe that these people have a mindset practice similar to this, that they're able to get through it because they practice it and they build up that that muscle of um, fo positive focus, gratitude, um, keeping the eye and the focus on what you do have. I'm smiling at this because I this is what I practice as well, <laughs> is, <laughs> is the consciousness meditation in the morning and at night is going back into what we call the state of innocence. Yes. Uh, um, in which we, you know, align with our genius or with our focus. Um, so I love that. I, I, it is something that I, I've always been practicing for the last, I think, five to six years now. I think since I've been studying super consciousness and self awareness, and you know how my beliefs work, my thoughts and feelings. But just having this tool every day, just to re refocus myself um, each morning before I start the day, before I start my workout, before I start my routines, before I kick off the whole thing, and then ending the night as well with, you know, what, what have I gone through today? What am I grateful for? And just recessing, right? Just having that reset. So I really love how you described it because it's something that works and I truly could attest to it. <laughs> it absolutely does. And if people want to take it a step further, I have a breathing practice that I do after I do the gratitude. I breathe and I take anything negative. It can be a physical ailment. It can be a thought. It can be um, anything that I just feel that's negative. And I just imagine that that energy just coming up through the breath and just releasing that out and just ridding myself of anything negative. And it's so therapeutic. After doing like, you know, I typically need to do eight to 20 breaths like that just to feel like I've gotten everything out that's negative to make room for the positive. And I, it's just unbelievably therapeutic and I feel so lightweight and I love doing it in the morning because it just sets me up for such a great day. And again, I do it at night too, but the morning is really when I feel like just like I'm ready, I'm energetic, I feel so light and I'm, I feel so positive. Um, it's just a great way to start your day. And would you say it, ch it changes the way you think all the time when you're making decisions throughout the day with, what, with your work and with you know, conversations and challenges that you go through 
Yes, um, it absolutely does. Um, I, I kind of take it a step further. So after I've done the breathing and I'm in a completely present state of just, I focused on my breath. I'm not, I don't have any outside thoughts at all in my head. I am just in the, in the present moment. And that's when I look at potential obstacles, maybe things that look like they're creeping in. And I just imagine those just floating away and just not being there. And I just imagine a straight path to the goal that I'm working towards, um, obstacle-free path. And it doesn't always, it's not always obstacle free, but it's amazing how little those obstacles matter um, throughout the day. Um, if I wasn't doing this practice, I think they might snowball into bigger things, definitely in a negative way. Um, but I just kind of imagine that straight path to my goal, obstacle free, and if anything creeps in, it's just, it's just there, it's just gonna go away. <laughs> and it's amazing how quickly I reach my goals when I keep that mindset. I really love that. It's just your focus on handing, holding that, that positive end result on creating yes. what you want to create. Um, I think that's something that most people kind of forget. They get so caught up in their negative feelings and um, the anger and frustrations and their emotions. I think that's where most people get caught up. And the stress. Yeah, and I would also add. To, oh, sorry to interrupt. I also was going to add to that the, the illusion of control. That's another thing that I used to hold on to the fact that I thought I had control over so much. And it was when I let go of that, that, you know, I was trying to control my health and getting things back and, you know, following A, B, C, part of this protocol to the T. And I was getting so frustrated. I was doing everything right. Why wasn't I getting better? And it was when I let go of that control, that's when I started to get better. And that was the realization of like, we have so little control over everything that we just have we've got control over our thoughts and how we handle things that come to us and if we can keep a positive mindset of that and just you know stay positive no matter what it's really hard to do sometimes bad things do happen we get adversity we you know people die we lose things that we really love and we have to we have to go through the process of mourning and of you know sadness and we have to process these emotions but stay positive it's just my life has changed in such a dramatic way that I get, I'm so excited to share this, but I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, that's just all kinds of, you know, that's a bunch of baloney that, you know, there's so much science though that, and I write about this in my book, there's so much science that backs this up, that the power of our thoughts can literally change every cell in our body. And to me, that's just mind blowing um, that if we focus on positive things, our immune factor, actually they've proven this with blood work with people that meditate, their immune factor goes up. And um, just, you know, if you see the science, it actually took me to realize that I had to go dig and see the science. So um, I'm sure a lot of other people have that mindset too, that, you know, I need to see the proof. The proof is in the pudding, but it's out there now. There's a lot of scientific data backing this up. Yeah, I really love that because that's where the work that I studied was alchemy. So it's all science. In fact, there's a proven method and, you know, there's a, there's a science that backs it up and uh, you can't argue with that when, when science backs it up, really. Absolutely. It's fascinating. <laughs> so when it comes to dealing with conflict, um, with integrity, has there been things that you had with your inner thoughts that you had to uh, be mindful of with your values as well? Yes. Yeah, so um, I, I, I guess I would say that I grew up a glass half empty type. Um, where I'd always be looking at, you know, well, this is missing and this is wrong and I'd be scrutinizing things. And I literally had to shift myself into a glass half full type person. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of work to do that shift because I started off on the opposite end of the spectrum. So I really had to work at it to the point where I can't even let myself miss a day or two because I find myself slipping back to that tendency very quickly. And it's, it's really a work in progress for me to keep that focus on the positive keep all my energy and my thoughts. Um, and even every little thought that creeps in, um, I try and notice that, but it's so hard because those negative thoughts, they're, they're sneaky, they creep right in there. And before you know it, you're mulling this over and you're like, wait a minute, I can't be doing that. So that practice was really, really hard for me um, because I kept, I, I kept like feeling like I was fighting upstream and I was fighting against what went naturally for me. And to this day, I, can't, I have a hard time watching the news. I have a hard time looking at social media. Um, I have to do it in little bits and chunks because it's the tendency for me to go negative. It's just, it's so easy for me to fall into that trap that I have to limit myself and I've got to be very careful. 
So you really have to, you have to know yourself inside and out really well, um, especially if you have those tendencies to get steered towards the negative. You have to realize your triggers, your traps, and when you are starting to get caught and drawn up into things. Um, there's certain people that I don't really talk to anymore because they tend to um, pull you into more of a negative state and it's more of a complaining conversation and, you know, all this stuff is wrong and I, I can't get I can't get caught up in that because I just I go there so quickly. <laughs> so it, it really is a work in progress to stay um, in the positive mindset and stay positive. And uh, there's so many little tips and tricks The waking up in the morning or the waking up in the um, morning and practicing gratitude and right before bed. Um, sometimes I'll just take a pause in the day and just get out for a two, two to five minute walk in nature. Um, I find that just being in nature, it's really hard not to be awestruck by all the things that are going on around you and how everything works in balance and and um, in perfection, actually. Um, and, you know, seasons, just, you know, how seasons change. And it's just it's a great way to take in everything that's beyond yourself and be thankful for something. Yeah, I love that you said connecting back to nature, because that's one thing that I think most of us are still we took for granted. I say we took yes. for granted. Um, we don't. We during, don't take it in. During, especially during this time, we now have the opportunity to slow down and take a break and pause and just really reflect on what really matters now. On on what we have is you know we have a roof over our heads, we have food, we have water, we're healthy. Um, we don't have to worry about those kind of things, and and we we're, we're damn sure that you know there's so many other people that would just would die to trade what we have with you know where they're at in different countries and stuff like that and i think that's something that i always keep in mind is i know some for a fact that someone would love to trade and be in my position right now absolutely yes we have so much and that to to back that up um when the whole pandemic started unfolding and there was all this fear and uncertainty and where's this going to go and how bad is this going to get and i got caught up in that a little bit and i was worried a little and I was out in nature and I was walking around and I was noticing, you know, the birds aren't acting like coronaviruses here. The squirrels aren't acting like coronaviruses here. Nature is just, you know, on, we're going to be okay. Everything is still going on. It, this is just a little blip in the road and we're eventually going to be okay. We don't know how long it's going to take or how bad it's going to get, but we're going to get back. We're going to be okay at some point. And I just kept that, that visual in my head that, you know, everything is going to be okay because I'm just looking around. You just kind of take it in. They say when you're afraid of flying, um, one of the tactics is to get on a plane and just take around, take everybody else's emotions intact and say, you know, nobody else is worried about this. Nobody else is fearful. And you you draw on everybody else's calm. And that's kind of what I was doing out in nature. I was drawing on the calm from the birds and from the squirrels. And it was helping me a lot. So when you start to feel upset or, you know, out of line or anxious, um, especially anxious, you can kind of take cues from other people around you or even back in nature and, and take that in and replace your anxiety with the calm that's outside of you. Yeah, jump the whole um, airplane, observing the, the, the energy of everyone else around you. I haven't yet, but that's still something that I want to conquer is go on the plane and just face that fear or the uncertainty of the skydive. But, um, <laughs> that's how i normally approach it was I, I normally just face it and just deal with it on the on the go <laughs> but i love how you said um observe what everyone else is going through and see how they're um handling it and uh, and observing that emotion and just try and adapt what they're doing yes and kind of tap into that energy because we're all we're all connected energetically um that's been scientifically proven there is just everything is energetic all of our brain function is energetic our hearts even energetic um, and electrical. And if we can kind of tap into the calm around us, we, we so much, um, we, we get wrapped up in our own little bubble in our own little worlds and it becomes this little anxious um, ball of mess. <laughs> and if we can just tap into, you know, the, the energy around us, um, which a lot of times is not that frenetic anxiety, uh, maybe at work it is, <laughs> but outside that maybe, you know, just, it, areas of calm if you know you're out taking a walk or you're just you know in a relaxing place just tap into that energy it's amazing how quickly um all the anxiety melts away when you let the other um energies in would it be what kind of useful 
I say strategies for leaders would they could they use in, to to help them make better decisions? Especially you know you said talking about being calm, connecting with nature, and surrounding yourself with people like yourselves who's just calm or able to to handle you know tension and stress and high performance. Especially in leadership, we're always you know managing teams and decisions and meetings and challenging obstacles that always come through. Yeah, well, you you definitely hit on one point there, and that's calm. And I think the two points for leadership are confidence and calm. And I think that that's a lot of what's been lacking in the leadership that we've had through this pandemic is the confidence and the calm. I think that it's just everything's been all over the map. Definitely nothing is calm. And the confidence has just been up and down. It's just like overly confident to like, wait a minute, we need to take a step back and reassess. And it's just like, it, it's just all over the map. But if we can, if leaders can hold firm in both their confidence and their calm and say, you know what, I don't know what's ahead, but we're going to get there one way or the other. We're going to get there as a team. We're going to get there together. We're going to get on the other side of this you know, tumultuous ride that we're taking. And to look at everything too, like, you know, it's one storm after the other and you're a ship, you're on a ship and you're weathering one storm after another and look back at your success. You got through all these storms. Let's, you know, let's um, be grateful for that. Let's appreciate what we got through and take that energy and that momentum into the next storm that we're, we're facing. And we're going to get through that one too. Um, I think that leaders can really be beneficial as um, someone that people can look up to, to say that, you know, we're going to get through this. And if there's anxiety, let's look back. Let's look at what we got through before. We're going to get through this too. Um, I know myself personally, the, the leaders that I have felt um, in my career, and in my life that had the most impact on me were the ones that really I, I felt confident and they were um, protruding that confidence that, you know, we're going to be OK, that that energy portrayed into me. And I think that those two states, the calm and the confidence are really two that uh, leaders can embrace right now. Fantastic. What what else would you say in terms of habits do you have to help you with your I guess process in, in your lifestyle because I, I you know there's uh, there's mi the mixtures that I've heard was you know people love exercising um, because that stimulates the brain and all those and you know there's more science again behind it all that like, you know the, if you look at all the the CEOs of the you know Elon Musk and, and then all those they have, always have a routine of exercising or Richard Branson and those you know, Tony Robbins they have exercises always in their routines Exercise is huge. I have it in mind too. And I can honestly say I, I give myself 10 minute minimums um, and these can be little chunks. And I have my little station that I go and I run at and I run two and a half to three hours a week. And I sometimes get it in increments of 10 minutes here, 15, 20 minutes there. But when I'm really overwhelmed by a lot or a lot has come at me, sometimes I just say, give me 10 minutes. I'll be right back. And in those 10 minutes, I, I kid you not, the, the serotonin and the endorphins that come from literally a 10 minute run, it's, it's amazing. And it just, it lifts you up, it boosts you, it gets you motivated to take on whatever um, you need beyond your thoughts. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's literally a chemical reactions happening. There's a reason people turn to exercise. Um, it's because it, it boosts the serotonin, it boosts the, the endorphins, and it, it's something that you can literally feel in as quick as 10 minutes. And that's why I give myself that 10 minute minimum but if I have a little extra time, I always take that because it just, it feels more and more the longer you do it to an extent. <laughs> you know what? I don't want to go pa much past 40 minutes or I'm just at the point where I'm burning myself out. But <laughs> Well, that's the thing. You've got to know where your, your limits are, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so what else would you add to um, income in terms of uh, your lifestyle leadership choices that you make when you're working with your clients and stuff like that? Um, managing conflicts, what's your experience with managing conflicts? Managing conflicts, um, it's really as big or as little as you make it. Um, it's how you handle and you attack it mentally. Um, and I wanted to add a quick thing too, um, beyond exercise, I think it's very important too. And I think that I, I try and live by the 80-20 rule, that 80% of what I take in is really healthy and really good for me, but then I'm gonna cheat sometimes too, and I'm gonna have fun, and I'm not going to control my life to the point where I have to scrutinize every little thing that comes into my mouth. Um, but I think 
that um, I just wanted to bring that up. But as, as far as conflicts go, um, we have to realize that, you know, we are not meant to just go through life as, you know, a, a quiet ride and a bullet cherry, so to speak. We have, we have times where adversity is going to hit, things are going to feel disproportionate to what other people are going through, or, you know, we could easily slip into that why me phase, um, that kind of thing. But I, I stress, and this is something that really helps people that I work with, I stress that, you know, let's look back what you've overcome in the past and you know name three of the biggest things that you've had to, to overcome in your life and during that time what happened did you become a better person or did you cower and become you know a, a shell of who you used to be and almost always a hundred percent of the time it's those times where we grow the most so i kind of take the mentality in the lens and say let's shift it and say we're coming up on a growth opportunity it's not a conflict, it's a growth opportunity. It's time to shine, it's time to grow and strengthen our skills and who we are as people. And we're gonna get through this stronger than we came into it. And when you shift that perspective, that you know this is a time of growth and I'm getting better, um, it, it's amazing how much easier it is to handle that conflict or that adversity coming at you. I love how you phrased it in terms of growth instead of change. Because so many people doesn't don't want to change, but also they're afraid of changing the you know, staying where they are. So I love you. Yeah. You changed the word to growth. <laughs> such such yeah. a crucial um, perspective to have. It's, um, if it's, instead of change is growth, and when you grow, you grow out and develop that mental attitude. Yes. And um, a lot of people are shocked that I can say I can honestly look back and say I'm grateful for that seven and a half years that I went through where I was sick because I would not be the person I am today if I had not go gone through that time. And they're like, how can you be grateful? You lost so much. And I'm like, but wait a minute, I gained so much more than I lost. So, yeah, I lost out on years, you know, p potentially, although I don't see it that way. I just see myself as I was a little lost at the time. But when I made that shift and I came out of it, I mean, what I've learned and what the abundance that has come into my life since then is just been um it's been miraculous as I, I don't have another word for it it's just been mind-blowing and i am honestly thankful for going through that time of adversity and that time of illness um for coming out on the other side so much healthier and so much more prepared for what else is coming at me in my life that's awesome if people wanted to find out more information about what you do where can they go the uh, best place to go will be my website. Um, it's Jennifer Garman um, with two A's, uh, G-A-R-M-A-N dot X-Y-Z, uh, just so you'll remember it. <laughs> and you can find the information the there. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? I'll make sure to put your link in the, oh. in the article and stuff as well, along with it, just so people can find you as well. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to add? Because um, I know you're working on your, you said your book. So, yeah, so my book is actually on Amazon. Um, the title is Flourish, Seven Ways Gratitude Can Transform Your Life. You can find that on Amazon. Um, there's also a link to it on my website as well. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your insights, Jennifer. I love I loved your perspective because it, it's such refreshing change from you know, the, the negativity that we have around right now. But your positivity just enlightens this whole room. It's just like, wow. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jonah. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Speak soon. Thanks so much. Take care.